everybody, and welcome back to another episode of You Missed It. Today, uh, this, I am your host, Rylan, and this is my pick. I am choosing 1940s The Philadelphia Story, but before we go any further, you might want to check out some of our old episodes. In order to do that, you want to uh, have a little look at our social medias. So you're probably listening to this on SoundCloud, iTunes, or YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter at YMI underscore podcast. And by the time that we post this, we may or may not have an Instagram as well. So you can always put that in your search bar and see what happens. Yay. You always got the mailbox, so. Uh, always no, got Jack's no. mailbox. Oh, yeah. Always. Oh, yeah. No. Send that UPS straight to the box. Yeah, we, UPS, Pure Later, <laughs> Canada Post, USPS. It no. doesn't matter. What DHL. About, don't forget about FedEx. Didn't he say that? Um, that everybody that forgets one? about FedEx. So. Oh. Oh. Sporks. Sporks. Yes, and sporks, please. <laughs> sporks? Yeah. They're useful. We, we, we're, use we are a little short on sporks. I suppose if you want to top us up, have at her. Um, at any rate, The Philadelphia Story is our movie today. This is based on uh, Philip Berry's play of the same name. This uh, play was written and conceived as a vehicle for uh, Catherine Hepburn's comeback. Uh, as she had been deemed box office poison in a 1938 article by the let me see independent theater owners of america um she was pretty desperate for a uh, for some good film vibes coming her way uh, so she started on the stage and this and the broadway version of this play was very successful and uh ultimately she acquired the film rights through uh, howard hughes incidentally who purchased them for her and uh, determined to have her come back remain unimpeded, she managed to negotiate veto rights over the cast, writer, uh, director, and producer. Um, however, the studio did uh, put in one safeguard in their minds. They were very skepti- skeptical about the uh, draw that Catherine Hepburn would provide, and so mm. they put not one but two A-list male actors with her in order to balance that out. Um so let me see we have in other credits we have starring katherine hepburn we have Cary grant we have james stewart ruth hussey john howard and a few other people as well uh, it's directed by george cuker uh edited by frank sullivan camera work by joseph ruttenberg and where's the writer here i can't read my own writing it's terrible here he is, uh, Donald Ogden Stewart, who won Best uh, Best uh, Writer for the Academy Awards, and uh, James Stewart as well won Academy Award for uh, for uh, Supporting Actor as well. And uh, in the film was also nominated for four other awards in, as well uh, for Actor, Actress, uh, Supporting Actress, and Director. And uh, in general, its budget was $914,000, and it pulled in $3.3 million in the box office. So it was a commercial success for sure, and a critical success as well. It uh, has 100% on Rotten Tomatoes to date, and in addition to those Academy Award recognitions, it has made uh, multiple uh, AFI Top 100 lists, uh, in terms of lines, film moments, and it's uh, 44th in the uh, 100 years, 100 movies, and the, the 2007 version, which is the most recent version, and it is uh, recognized as their uh, as their top five, uh, their number five in the top 10 romantic comedies as well. Um, yeah, so you're probably wondering at this point, uh, Ryland, this is a show about underrated movies. <laughs> Why are we even talking about this? Uh, well, even though it's commercially and critically recognized, it, I mean, it, it seems to be, to me, be, be acknowledged, but hardly ever talked about. And the fact that I am the only one at this table to have seen this movie at any point in the past is uh, an indicator of that. It's, that's a, it's a pretty uh, rare occurrence, I can tell you. Um, so perhaps uh, what I'm looking to explore is maybe why uh, this doesn't get as recognized. Now, uh, could it be because it was based on the theater and film-going audiences maybe had a prejudice against something that's written for the theater audience? Or could it be have something to do with the abundance of other fantastic films that were coming out around that time? Uh, This movie was immediately preceded by 
uh, Gone with the Wind, Wizard of Oz, Son of Frankenstein, and Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, which was uh, uh, James Stewart's uh, role before, before this one. Uh, the same year, uh, in 1940, that is, we had Grapes of Wrath, The Great Dictator, uh, Rebecca, His Girl Friday, Pinocchio, and Fantasia, two from Disney that year. And it would be followed in 1941 by Citizen Kane and Maltese Falcon and by Casablanca in 42. So it was bookended and mm-hmm. surrounded by another uh, number of multitude of other classic films. So perhaps it got lost in the shuffle as well. Or maybe uh, it it uh, balanced out, only just barely managed to balance out the uh, negative karma from the uh, Catherine Hepburn's poor track record in the 30s, and we kind of just managed to leave it at that. Um, anyways, before we get everyone's thoughts on the matter, I'll just give you a quick little bit of backstory as to what this movie is actually about. Uh, it's the main character, uh, starring Catherine Hepburn, is Tracy Lord. She's based on a real, uh, real-life Philadelphia socialite, uh, Helen Hope Montgomery Scott, uh, who's also a uh, philanthropist and known for her social hijinks at the time. Anyway, uh, Tracy was married to one C.K. Dexter Haven. Their marriage and uh, subsequent divorce were both uh, quite dramatic and, uh, and caused a stir at the time. At any rate, uh, this is... The day before Tracy is meant to uh, remarry another man, and and uh, let me see, Mike and <clears throat> breathe. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Luke. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking the exact same thing. Sorry, my my writing. You can my writing. And... My writing looks like a little kid's writing, so it can be. I can lose my place pretty easily. Um, any anyway. rate. We got a wedding about to happen at some rich folks' houses, and naturally, the paparazzi want in on it. So you have these two characters, uh, Liz and Mike, who show up pretending to be friends of Tracy's brother. They're also in cahoots with Dexter there, the ex-husband. But not maybe not for the malicious reason, do you think? But because uh, he's in turn being blackmailed by the editor of Spy Tabloid magazine, for whom Mike and Liz uh, work. And the editor has some compromising photos of Tracy's father, which would cause a big hullabaloo if they were published. So he's agreed to hold off on publishing that for exchange of dirt on the wedding. So it's a whole big mishmash of deception and secrecy and who knows what and who's figured out what. And in the meantime of all of it, Tracy is trying to figure out, does she even want to get married to this guy after all? Or what is what is she even doing with her life? Is it worth it? So, uh, after that long-winded, rambling introduction, let's uh, hear somebody talk some sense, maybe. Uh, I'll pass it on to Zach. Well, you know, I thought it was it was really good. <laughs> but I don't know about that old fella. That old fella in the movie. I don't know, hitting on that girl. Well, golly gee. Uncle Willie. Tell more. <laughs> Everybody's got a creepy Uncle Willie. Yeah, or, right. or Grandpa <laughs> Uncle, Grandpa Jack. A Grandpa Jack, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, no, that guy, I don't know. Um, yeah, I really like this. I mean, and I'm, I'm kind of slowly noticing, I've noticed the past couple of years, that I'm becoming a sucker for these romantic comedies of old time. Oh, yeah. Uh, like 40s era, especially. Uh, I think they're really solid, like really strong, like 40s and 50s. Um, and this is, yeah, this is another one. I mean, and you've got the cast, you know, you've got Cary Grant and James Stewart and Catherine Hepburn and yada, yada, right? It's, it's a pretty packed cast. So it's a good point of like, yeah, it got recognized, but it's also been kind of buried, um, Mm -hmm. over time. Um, you know, these old movies, right? It's, it's, there's a lot of factors. I mean, the obvious one being that we're in a generation that unfortunately doesn't watch a lot of black and white movies. Um, just that alone, I think is a deterrent of just why people would, you know, not acknowledge it at all. But, um, but I think you should, I think it's, uh, I think it's really good. I think, uh, it didn't turn out the way I thought it would, um, which was interesting at the beginning. I wasn't sure what to make of it. Um, seems to be a common thing that's happened recently, actually with the past few picks where I'm kind of like, oh, I don't know. Um, but then it ends up turning out pretty solid. So this is another example of that. And yeah, I, th- I thought all the performances were really good. I, I thought the dialogue was good. It was funny. It was had interesting things to say. And yeah, overall, I just, yeah, I thought it was good. I thought it looked really good too. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was shot very well, even though it's like, you know, on a couple different locations, but it's primarily just at that house for a lot of it, right? 
Exactly. Well, again, keep in mind based on a play, so limited sure. setting changes. And that's really cool. Um, you know, and yeah, I just yeah, I just thought it I really didn't have any qualms with this movie at all. I thought it was actually really good. Um, yeah, I don't know really yeah. Well, I, remember so being, I remember it being really funny, but it was even it funnier was. than I remember it. It was, it was really funny, and that's the thing Very about these... sharp, witty writing. Yeah, and that's the thing about these yeah. 40s like romantic comedies, too, is that they really up the comedy. Like, it's actually really clever, and it's really funny. And I find nowadays, it's just... They get, like, romance, but the romance feels cheap, and then there's no laughs. It's so, so it's formulaic like, that there's no yeah. point. You watch the trailer, you've seen the movie, or you've seen one movie, you've seen them all. Exactly, kind of yeah. So it's, it's really shitty, right? And it's, like, it's too bad, because you go back to that that era and they were just like hitting like there's so many like that you got to see and yeah this is just another example of them nailing romantic comedies back then it's pretty pretty sexy <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> a lot to unpack i you know you already took it why why uh modern audiences don't watch i i don't want to watch that black and white shit yeah i want to see i want to see colors man i look at the cover i expect to see colors there's colors <laughs> on it it's fake it's uh, false advertising it's fake news man. they've been doing that since 1940 every all the posters <laughs> and like title cards and uh what were those lobby cards called or what was it called <sighs> yeah like lobby um, cards yeah, yeah, yeah okay yeah, yeah. um okay. those were always like colorized like you know versions of black and white movies mm-hmm. so they've always been doing yeah. that since day one no, I mean, uh, there's, I can, I, I imagine there's a lot of reasons I, I haven't seen this or heard of it. Uh, just, just, uh, it's probably, well, age is probably the biggest factor. Just the fact that it's, it's so old. So I would have had to have seek, uh, had to have sought it out. Um, and, uh, and, rom- and being in the romantic comedy genre, not that I hate the genre or anything like that, but it definitely doesn't appeal to me as much as, uh, something that's a little more. Uh, if you're going to be doing a romance, maybe a little more dramatic. So that rom-com kind of light feel is not something that I tend to dra- gravitate towards. Um, and yeah, you were absolutely right. You hit, Zach, you hit on something that I uh, that I noticed as well, that mm. 1940s kind of, yeah. like that era mm-hmm. of rom-com is totally different than yeah. nowadays. Um, like a, a an example of, of a, like a rom-com that I actually enjoyed uh that in like recently that I can remember at least something that uh, that I actually that sticks out in my mind is something like Crazy Stupid Love or something yeah. like that where I dug the uh, the romance and the chemistry as well as the comedy and it, it landed for me. I think that that's the biggest differentiator for me here is that so I I I liked the dialogue a lot. I didn't know that it was a, uh, that it was for broadway at first uh Mm. and that that makes a lot of sense because that was probably that was the best part of the movie was the dialogue was really uh like snappy witty Mm -hmm. well-written and that's the part that i liked about the movie um in terms of the plot and and kind of how things went i mean again it's a rom-com so i i guess you shouldn't expect a whole hell of a lot out of the plot like it's going to be this crazy you know complicated plot or anything but uh, i don't know you so zach you Mm -hmm. were saying you didn't see where it was going yeah honestly i thought that like you know just in terms of like who ended up with who and all that like i i I did think it was going to turn out a little different i mean they were doing different things they were moving different pieces i just felt like it was like i could see it a mile away like for this one at least like i felt like i saw all of that coming i knew you know you know who this guy wanted to be with her and that sure that that they had this this thing going on that was going to happen this other couple right so Mm. i i i kind of saw that that shaken out that way i really didn't think though that especially like the two main people i guess um even though it's really an ensemble um you know would get together i really didn't think they're going to they were very distant in the movie and they were like yeah they were coming together but then they were like split apart and they were you know and then you have james stewart and it's like okay well so I, yeah I well really, that's a, that's really another didn't. thing that i that i kind of uh, i another thing i latch on to is that i don't find so i'm a kind of a stickler for for finding and you've probably noticed this with me in the past is that uh i i i'm really I, i'm really picky about realism and characters like if mm-hmm. they it doesn't need to be so hardcore especially for something light and and yeah. you know not very serious but they have to act like to me they have to naturally go from feeling to feeling it has to be like what a human being would do 
you know, and I just didn't buy her arc. I didn't buy that. Oh, she's, you know, this tough, hard woman. And then, you know, on the, on the inside, she's all, you know, she, she wants to be softer and she wants to, to be more, as she puts it, human. Right. Um, I just didn't buy that she would have acted the way that she acted at the end, and and that I, I didn't it didn't feel as earned to me as it as it could have. I mean, it's a it's a little drastic. I see what you mean, but I could see it. Like it felt it felt. I mean, you're not really gonna have drastic. a movie that's three hours though. You know, building that up, but at the same time, no. But you could you could have like it's a almost two hours, so you could have easily accomplished that. I think. Like I think it's a way you could. I don't like I, the I don't stuff think they did though. I I mean I don't know like. You're like yeah, you I don't could, know. Maybe it's I think the it'd be style. A I think, and again, I think it comes down to that style, that mm-hmm. era. I, I think that I don't think that that's something they they did in that era. It was it was kind of the way these characters are written. It's it's meant to be, um, I guess, kind of implied in a way that mm. that oh, they have this uh, this these internal motivations that they just have to come out right. Yeah, but. I, I, I don't know. For me, I just didn't buy it as much. Um, you wanted more time for that. To... I wanted a better character arc from, from okay. her, at least, just because I, I didn't feel like... I just didn't find her character that believable. I, I disagree with that. I think it's totally believable. I, I just... The, the only part that I kind of understand is the end where... She just kind of is like, yeah, okay, let's do and it. And that's so jarring but, for me. That's that's the thing that bugs me the most. That's the reason why I didn't like Iron Fist. That's the reason why no, I, I don't like. But, yeah, there's there's stuff like that. There's mm-hmm. there's it's it's where they have a character that you thought you knew, and then all of a sudden at the very end they do something that's out of character, and it yeah. breaks like it breaks everything you've done before that for for me. So I I, I mean, anyways, that's. So the, if I if I had to break it down to to what I what I didn't like and what I did like mm-hmm. like I, I really like the witty dialogue they did a really good job of of uh, having the banter be really fun and I did laugh so props for that and I uh, but when it came to the character the character arcs and motivations I, it was a bit of a sticking point for me mm-hmm. and then I also uh, when it comes to romantic comedies I kind of want a little bit more um, uh, the like the chemistry has to be there, but the comedy has to be really, really great for me to enjoy it. Mm-hmm. And I thought the comedy was just good in this. So like it was good. I chuckled, but I, I rarely had moments where I thought it was like really, really funny, you know, <laughs> like uh, unless it was like something that I don't think was intentionally funny that I just found funny. Well, yeah, but um, I thought it was consistently funny though. It like was that. consistently funny. That's yeah. why I said mm-hmm. good. I didn't say mediocre. Yeah. I said good, but not great. You know, like again, I laughed uh, harder at some at like something like crazy stupid love um, oh okay i haven't like, seen it like there were oh yeah, yeah you should see it. there's good chemistry there i heard it was it okay <laughs> i don't know i thought it was pretty good um but anyway like I, again romantic comedies aren't really my genre anyway, well no so. they're not mine either and that's yeah. why it's I'm no, more of a no i wouldn't, wouldn't say they're mine either exactly. and that's they never have been but, and, yet and this i one... mean i don't see what this one does mm-hmm. tremendously differently to separate itself from the pack like a hundred like i'm i was actually really shocked to hear some because again i didn't know any of the the background on it i was a little shocked to hear 100 percent on Rod- like it's toy story levels of that uh, better than Toy Story, actually. Uh, it's one percent better than Toy Story two, <laughs> or three. The first two three. have one hundred percent. The third one, yeah. Oh, that's what it was. Sorry. Yeah. So it's at the same caliber as the first two Toy Stories. Yeah. I'm expecting something at that caliber, and I just I'm I was surprised to hear that a little. But I mean, bit. that's whatever though. Isn't the Godfather under one hundred percent? I believe it's it is. Under, yeah. yeah. So there you go. Like <laughs> it's yeah. Some asshole was like, I don't like it, but like <laughs> you know, you can't completely go like as yeah. When but you're it's that still high. being put, it's still being put at you know in that. Mm-hmm. I think it's a really good movie. I, I think personally, really, you, you I do put it yeah. up against like movies that are that well regarded. Other movies that are that. I mean, well they're regarded. they're very different. But the thing is, like I said about that era, they really had something. They really had something down with this genre that we've kind of lost. And I think that's another reason why just, it's a good I, pick for underrated. Is that you know yeah we kind of need to look back at these movies and kind of be like, you know yeah they've got their shit together. They've got really witty dialogue. They're consistently funny. Whereas a lot of the movies nowadays are just not funny at all. You look no. at the past year. I mean, what was funny? There wasn't American, really a lot of movies. The American comedy as a genre has been down for a long time. Yeah, it, like like you have basically they're relying on just these comedic stars to yeah. really be the main comedic drive throughout the whole film. Yeah, when you know 
really it takes all three facets, not just the actor, but you need yeah. a good script, you need a good director, yeah. you know, who knows how to make take You've been material. doing a better like, job lately. Certain I think. certain films, like um, one director who's really good at this lately is um, Edgar Wright. Well, um, yeah, yeah, he's one of the yeah. like with Baby Driver and the Cronado trilogy, like utilizing yeah. funny actors, but also a funny script. One well, like situational humor and stuff like that. Yeah, visual, stuff, yeah. yeah, visual Very humor. Visual. Yeah, I yeah. like that kind of stuff. Like I and you know, writing is important as well. I I think like Thor Ragnar- Ragnarok was another good example of mm-hmm. good comedy writing uh, lately. But um, That's okay. no, the other thing that I did want to point out though was um, I think it's another thing that that kind of stuck stuck with me from the film uh was it's it's like we're saying like a product of their times there's just random little things in there that just kind of bug me a little bit mm-hmm. uh yeah like you know there's some mis- there's definitely misogyny in there oh yeah sexism. And, yeah. Uh, yeah yeah like you can tell it, and it's just I, you know, it's still it's still kind of an, it's at the very least annoying when you're watching it. You oh yeah, know? and you also you also have that one that one moment where Ruth Hussey says pick an innie too. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you know, like yeah, you can kind of like you can you can kind of look at it through the lens of this came out so long ago. Yeah, but at the same time, it's still it's still it still sticks out, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. So that still it sort of detracted from. Par- partially detracted from the experience for me yeah so that that's just Dates another consideration little. yeah it's just the dated element of it it yeah. shows in that respect none in regards again to the filmmaking like you were saying i thought it, it looked great yeah it did um yeah. i thought it uh yeah and I, I and i thought the writing was really good so like it holds up in that regard but in for its its age it's it's, it's yeah. those small things and no really you're right i mean right from the beginning you know that was the, i mean that was obviously the biggest one for me was just like hurting like not just hit over the head like like they were like oh get socked again she didn't get socked she got like fucking like she body slammed. head slammed yeah basically it just like face and push and apparently but they, it was like this well <laughs> like, appara- was... well apparently they that was done really just for comedic effect because apparently they like on the behind the scenes with this movie they uh they did that take over and over and over again because oh, they really, really enjoyed it because it was funny <laughs> And then, and Captain Ever just liked doing her own stunt, and then like apparently like one take where she had to do something to him, and he got all bruised, and she kind of like mocked him for that. Really? They're like, I can take, it and you want to do your own stunts? That's pretty <laughs> funny. That's funny. It's like, um, but yeah, no, yeah, it was a bit weird, right? That that was like, and that kind of set it, and I was like, oh, I don't know what to make of this movie, but then, but yeah, I don't know. It just kind of worked its way in, and and yeah, there are yeah. bits throughout of misogyny, but it's like it would I mean, be it, it would be times. easy enough yeah. to retell the story you know? without those little bits yeah. in it so for that reason i don't see them as huge detractors overall yeah like are... obviously like it's a you know it's a sign of the times and obviously like it yeah. doesn't it's not a like good obviously thing. we know better yeah. now but i mean we should have always known better <laughs> sure sure for um, sure but, but people are like stupid yeah I, marriage was definitely a very a very different thing then it was yeah. looked at as a as very yeah, it was looking. It was very favorable to men. Um, Is it? Yeah. Uh, but uh, the other last point that I'll make about the, another thing that kind of uh, detracts from this the, this style of movie, I find that a lot of a lot of movies from that era uh, focus a lot on like high society and things mm-hmm. like that. And I, you know, you you'll have especially with with. Um, like the dialogue was written in a way that it was it was of course it was because it's based on somebody in high society but it was very like uh, like almost uh, snobbish as yeah said in yeah the movie. that's probably that's yeah. probably the best way to put it it, yeah. it was very snobby and you know I just I don't enjoy watching rich people being rich and snobby all the time (laughs) right like i can i can watch it but like i'm looking for something else to latch on to i'm looking for like some kind of commentary or some kind of thing obviously i'm not going to get it from a rom-com so you know it's kind of it's kind of just another thing that's like oh i don't love this setting because i don't love i don't love (laughs) well again sure well if it's my opinion as to why i i did or did not you know what I liked and did not no, like sure, the movie. Sure. It, it's, it's just kind of random. Me, just kind of like okay. it's just the way they were talking. It was again. I want to like the characters. It ke- I keep yeah. coming back to this. The characters, ba- characters are always first for me. Right. Always, always first. Mm-hmm. Everything else will be secondary. And that all, that all, uh, like it goes with story for me. Characters and story. yeah, yeah, of course. So yeah. 
you know, that all ties into mm. to the setting. Everything all ties into that. And I think that, yeah, that high society setting, mm. like uh, those little uh, signs of the times that were in there. And honestly, my complaints about the character arcs that mm. impacts my viewing experience. But mm. overall, I'd say that uh, I, th- I thought it was I thought it was good. Mm-hmm. But I, I definitely wouldn't have put it as high as as like you know a Toy Story or something like mm-hmm. I, I, I I like Academy Award winning. I'm yeah, a little yeah. bit surprised. I'm yeah. Again, I mean, I'm not, and I think the characters are really great. I mean, I think we're just completely different on this one. Me but, and you, yeah. But it's I'm like, curious to see what Alex thinks. Yeah, but James Stewart, Cary Grant doing you know different types. They're different types of quips. Like them in any movie is just great. Mm-hmm. Like I, I think they're just yeah. great. And the fact that you get both in this is like already something to celebrate. So I think that's fantastic. And Jimmy yeah. Stewart was on a roll at that point because yeah. 1940 Philadelphia story. Yeah. Mr. Smith goes to Washington. Great, yeah. great film. Fucking loved it when I first saw it like 10, 12 years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What was the other one he did that was really good? Well, the in big that same one. Span of time. Well, it's, it was it's a, a wonderful later. life. It's a wonderful life. It's a wonderful yeah. life. Yeah. A bit later, but yeah. all in the classic. Yeah, post war. Yeah. yeah. See, yeah. again, yeah, you, you'll like mention all these. Uh, a rear window. Yeah. That was, that was 50s more than or 50s. 60s? That's more well, than 50s. Was, yeah. But, well, mm. but uh, well, yeah, it's Wonderful Life, I guess. Was... Rope was uh, 49. Right. Wonderful Life was 46. Right, and... right. Yeah. It was a little earlier. But yeah. still, like, it was. You know, I keep coming really back good. to. I just think it, it's something about the genre. I, it yeah. has to be just because, like, I, I don't know. Just something I got is, roped in. I got, I got no. Yeah, I just, I, I felt like the depth wasn't there for me. Oh, okay. And I, you know, I, I like romance, but again, but they don't ever have uh, Jimmy Stewart. It was just well, so you know. Like, <laughs> let's go for a swim. I'm fucking it up so bad. Yeah, it's like Chris Walken Walken right there. That's what I was saying. For a swim. (laughs) You know you want to go for a swim, don't you? Shove it up your ass. Wow. Uh, see, that was the part that happened when they took her up to the bedroom. Yeah. No one would say anything about it. No, exactly. Yeah. Controversy. (laughs) Blasted haze code. So when, when it was like the first... 30 seconds of the film where it's silent and they're they're giving each other the stink eye yeah, yeah. and stuff and he he goes to hit her and i'm thinking yeah that's a product of that time that's right. exactly what they did it's wrong yeah. and none of us laughed mm-hmm. if i remember correctly because it's a product of our time we don't yeah, think, I think shit we like that is like, funny like, oh yeah like we're like, like ready to like <laughs> yeah <laughs> to be like not cool <laughs> yeah. yeah he's gonna yeah. smack yeah, a they bitch. Caught everybody up yeah yeah, yeah. Sure. No, uh, nobody yeah. laughed but what really caught me off guard is when he, he pushes her down. Mm. And I thought, okay, this is the kind of film it's going to be. All mm. right, I'll, I'll go along with it. I'd never seen anything with Cary Grant before, so I was a little really? on. Wait, yeah, what? Yeah, unfortunately. I haven't seen any hit, Charade is hit, really Hitchcock good. films Charade. with Grant. I may have seen the airplane part uh, in that one film. Can't remember the name. Oh, I saw... Uh, uh, was it Snakes on a Plane? North by Northwest? North by Northwest. North by Northwest. Northwest. Yeah, I mentioned that. Yeah. yeah. Plane thing. Oh right, where he gets chased. Well, by yeah, where he gets chased yeah. by the. Dark. You know the most yeah. iconic yeah. scene. Yeah. In I think on the cover. <laughs> well, I would think that Mount Rushmore would be. The, okay, fine. You, fine. Not to me. It's the plane equally duster. or most. I, I mean, Metallica. I've, I've seen that well, the, well, the ending too is pretty <laughs> I've great. I've seen too. that in like a sizzle, like a sizzle. Clip it it is one like, of the. It is the most iconic shot yeah. in the yeah. movie. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. With him running away with it, chasing him. Yeah. Like I've seen that shot, but I've never seen that movie. Yeah, yeah. It's really good. Really, it's really good. Really good. Really, yeah. The, mm, maybe it'll turn up. Sherrod, too, is very good. Another yeah. one I would like to throw out. What? Sherrod. <laughs> Sherrod? Sh- yeah, really good. Sh- Charade? Sherrod? Sherrod. Yeah. Sherrod? Is that a Does foreign anybody film? anybody pronounce it that way? I say I'm from high society. <laughs> oh, oh. I, I, I wondered why that bugged me so much. Pink and why Floyd Sherrod. pronounces it that way. Sherrod, you are. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, actually. Haha, Sherrod, you are. Right, 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 right. right. Actually, yeah. you're from New Brunswick where they say everything wrong. According, 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 according to uh, to Andrew, oh yeah, just canteen. Andrew, you just made so yeah. many enemies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bring everybody, it, everybody from New Brunswick. Bring you know, it. Send all send your hate message. to Jack's no. address. <laughs> no, no, send yeah. it to Andrew. Attention to Andrew. Yeah. Attention to me. I'll get it. Don't worry. Yeah. Speaking of the dialogue, mm. speaking of the East of Canada, <laughs> the, the dialogue threw me for a loop at first. It was like watching Brick for the first time. Oh, yeah. Ryan Johnson. But, oh, so uh, like the 40s kind of like yeah, lingo. It, it's a yeah. bit more drawn out, and they make a lot more sense, especially when you compare it to some of the films nowadays. <laughs> like this film could be at least a half hour, if you were to redo it today, half yeah. hour less because you'd cut down on the dialogue. Yeah. Mm. You know, when people talk about Shakespeare's time that they – 
they used words that we don't use anymore. Yeah, so kind of even made fun of that in the movie, actually. A little bit. Like they had that joke where uh, the librarian was just speaking kind of like Shakespearean Fuck, English. I love oh, that. Yeah. Scene. That was great. Scene. <laughs> that was pretty great. Again, <laughs> James, like you know, Jimmy Stewart. It's just like. So good. Yeah, he's Actually, so yeah, good. You know what? I'll, I'll say this. Like, <laughs> he's so I, I, good. He's a highlight for sure. He's a highlight in every I'll, movie I'll I see him yeah. in. Every movie I see Maybe, him in. Maybe, again, yeah, her character arc less. More her character arc less his. Mm. Uh, his. Uh, yeah. I thought the, the male leads were a little bit stronger. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, again, product of the times, mm. I think. But Catherine Hepburn was fucking awesome, I thought. Mm. I, I thought she was good. I yeah. really thought she knocked it out of the park. Like when when it's the close up on her, yeah, you got to give it all, and she did. She yeah. delivered. I thought. Mm-hmm. Um, and you were talking about her arc. I think she did have a character arc, and I think mm-hmm. that's yeah. why you see it in the film at the end, where she does something that at the beginning of the film she would not have done. Right. That's part of what an arc is. He just didn't care for it. Like, it, right. like yeah, there yeah. is an arc, but he just didn't care. Like, for yeah, it. I liked it. Was it. There, but it, I just didn't buy it. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I, I just, I just, I liked it. You know, I, th- yeah, I thought it was good too. Um, yeah, I totally understood it. Yeah, I, I feel yeah. like she had some pretty yeah. serious uh, self examination to do. Exactly. And basically, exactly. she had basically had her choice between being with, uh, well, two different people who would have basically given her whatever she thought she wanted at the time, but she wouldn't have been happy. Or she could hang around with the guy who actually sees through her bullshit and have something genuine. Right. Or the third choice is she just stays by herself because she knows she's a piece of shit at that point. So she's just saying, no, I'm not going to marry you. You're a lot. You're a hundred times better than I am. Mm -hmm. So goodbye. And it could have gone that road. I mean, it was starting to to do that. And yeah, it was like, Mm -hmm. yeah, that could happen. But you know that that's like not the proper... Or the one you don't hope for, right? The yeah. ending, yeah. and then luckily it worked I, out. I probably would have appreciated that more, to be honest. Well, because, yeah, I guess. Well, the, the, you, the, but the whole thing the is there's coming. no point in approaching him. Well, she went and, back to her abuser, essentially, if you really think about it. I did think about like, that. Like, that's, yeah. you know, I'm not, I mean, that's, yeah, that's. I just fucking hate that, that <laughs> like, mentality. I just, I don't know. It sticks yeah. out to me more, mm. you know? It's just. And that that is like a bit sketch, and who knows? They play it off like it's a happy ending in the show. Like who? who but I couldn't. Who like knows? Go like you, you get the sense that her character is impulsive mm-hmm. enough that like she it might it might not even work out. Like they might end up divorced yeah, sure. again. I mean, but, I. I had a feeling though, that, like maybe he's a changed man too. Like you never know. What like, what indicate like what do they give you to? He I don't know. Less. Do he's give... drinking less. Yeah, there's he's a the lot only of one things. Who didn't oh, get so, drunk. oh, okay, so they're saying that like oh, it, you can blame the. It's okay to no, to no an it's alcohol, not no, to be an no, alcoholic. No, no, no. Wife, going off what he was stop, saying, what you're asking, what me. has he done to change? I'm like, yeah, well, he's changed a little bit. That's one thing. I mean, again, I'm not saying that that's the case. I'm just saying like how you could rationalize like okay, you know, maybe he's okay now. You know, off of a few things, but yeah, if I know. What I you have mean. to. It came across my mind for hoop, sure. If I have to jump through hoops to rationalize their character, then they've done a poor job of writing. I kind of saw it though, because mm. then I thought, like, oh well, would they really have her go back to that guy though, right? Because if he was really awful and he abused her and stuff, then you know, you would think that, oh well, that's it ended. But Why women, go back? Uh, women I know rarely a, go back to abusers yeah. because they feel they can do no better. Right, 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 right. Or, you know, and a multitude of other reasons on top of that. That's just one. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's shitty. So it's yeah. not even, a, like, that's not even, uh, a, a lot of women go back to men that they shouldn't because they're, because of other other factors, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I wouldn't think that that's the only reason to go back is, oh, no, he mm-hmm. must be a changed man. No, I don't think so. He's no, not, he hasn't right. indicated in any way. Maybe that's what they were saying. <laughs> no, whatever. <laughs> food for sorry thought. alex continue so i think that like <laughs> like brick with the philadelphia story mm-hmm. you just got to stick with it you yes. just got to keep watching because i was kind of teetering on ah, i don't know about this film mm-hmm. but it was about halfway through i started to understand like i sound like a dumb guy yeah and i kind of am so i f- oh yeah thank you thank you for that <laughs> <laughs> i got a dumb fart for you i was gonna say yeah. you think you yeah. sound like a dumb guy man. i do no the deep voice the deep voice does not make people sound dumb well no 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 when you hear i I sound pretty stupid over here no 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 (laughs) when you hear women uh female comedians on stage making fun of men they talk in the deep voice and they go like this and that just to make fun of them then that's one of the characteristics i accept that i have that that's fine but it was yeah it was about halfway through the film i really started to get into it and I don't know that at that point in time, in the 1940s, that they had really defined genres. I could be completely wrong, but it 
it didn't seem to me like it was a romantic comedy until at least two thirds of the way through where you started to see the love triangles and the different relationships yeah. start to go haywire. And there's, there's something about that. You were saying that women who don't say anything, they go back to the guys. There's something about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When uncle Willie first met, no, not first met, but I think it was the next scene when he met Jimmy Stewart's uh, partner, the photographer. The photographer. Yeah. yeah. So Uncle Willie, he does his creepy lines, whatever. Oh, yeah. And, and yeah, yeah, I remember that. He goes to yeah. walk away. He pinches her on the butt, and, yeah. and Jimmy Stewart looks at her and says, Oh, well, what's wrong with you? That was a terrible impression. But <laughs> We all have done our terrible. Better than Zach. <laughs> yeah, Christopher yeah. Walken, whatever it's <laughs> hey! supposed to be. She says nothing. She says the word nothing. She's just she's burying just ignores it. ignores it, yeah. Yeah, and... Yeah. And she ignores all his creepy advances, and, and it's looked at. Yeah. It's all done for comedic effect. It is, and mm-hmm. it would have been funny at that time. But our standards are much different than their standards, yeah. which is why I think you would have thought it's a good movie, but not a great movie at that time. Had you been born in that day yeah. and age and saw that film, sure. you might have thought, "Oh man, it's a great film." Yeah. So, product of the times, especially that intro music. Remember, and Justice yeah. for All. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, the intro to this that's got some dated. Yep. Product yeah. of the times. Yeah. But still didn't bother me as much though. That, no, yeah, that, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that didn't stick out as much for me personally. Um, but yeah, no, totally noticeable. That yeah. uh, the music is yeah. what I'm referring to. But uh, no, that that I definitely picked. Uh, I, I definitely noticed that, like that Uncle Willie is a character, oh, like just how yeah. creepy he was, and and how acceptable it is that he's creepy like that and doing these uh, pretty wildly. And it, it's less that he's doing these things. It was more that it's for comedic effect. Yeah. The fact that you're making a joke of this stuff, it's, it, I don't know, it's just, it, nowadays it's obviously in poor Whoa. taste, it's and it's noticeable. Taboo, yeah. It's, it's yeah. noticeable. It's not something that, you know, I'm not going all full SJW here or something where mm. I like, this is so inappropriate, but it, it definitely does take away from the enjoyment just because, yeah, I have a totally different mentality. I see that kind of shit, and exactly. I don't think it's funny. Exactly. So if they're playing it that way and I don't laugh at it, then that takes away from the enjoyment of the movie because I'm supposed yeah. to laugh at that. Yeah. So and it's clear that I'm supposed to. So, like, yeah, I totally know. I'm glad you brought that up. I well, forgot yeah. to mention it, but yeah, and and that was accepted at that time to yeah. make the advances that he did. He's clearly showing interest, and that's just the way it was at that point in time. So of course it was accepted. Now, no way. I'm, I bet there's going to be at least one SJW listening to this. They're going to go watch the Philadelphia story. <laughs> <laughs> and they're going to get so pissed. Yeah, but they're they going to want to kill bad. people. If they want to feel better, they could just go watch Philadelphia or something. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm <laughs> they could like just forget those two parts of the title and just watch Philadelphia, and I'm sure they'd feel a, little a movie better. about all no. like men, like yeah, all what? <laughs> all... I, I know that's the <laughs> entitled white man. Even though he got AIDS, yeah. he was still an entitled white man. Yeah. He was so, yeah, privileged. Yeah, exactly, they'll privileged. Yeah, he hey, was so privileged. Antonio Banderas in that movie. Come mm-hmm. on. The, yeah, he's, 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 not a, um, he's not a person of color or transgender, so he's not oppressed enough. Oh, yeah. shit. Damn. All right. You know what? But, oh, the times. They are changing. Yes. No. Oh, the times. They are Actually, yeah, changing. it's funny that we watch this movie just now mm-hmm. contextually, I guess. But uh, yeah, I know. It, yeah, it just it's just like maybe. Yeah, maybe I am hyper aware of this stuff. Maybe. Well, no, I mean, yeah. you're not you're not wrong. Like it definitely appeared to me, too. But yeah. It's like, you know, it's it's hard, right? Because it's like, yeah, it's something that obviously shouldn't be laughed at or anything. And why is it in the movie? But at the same time, it's like, yeah, it's product of the times I get, like, that was a thing. And it's, you know, it's it's a hard kind of thing to, to weigh, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I would, I dis- as a person in the modern age, I disavow those parts. But yes. I still thought the movie was good. Because you got yeah. you got to have a little bit of idea about history Mm. and why we think it's wrong today. But overall I thought, yeah, it turned into a kind of comedy romance at the end. And I, I really liked it. Like I said, about two thirds of the way through to the end, I was, I was paying attention from the start and it started to click for me. Mm. So that's when I got more into it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're right. Like I, and that's the other thing too, is I do feel like it gets better and better and better and better and better. That, yeah. that had effect. I like, and I, but I, I think I liked it definitely earlier. Um, like got into it earlier than you did, but I, I do agree that it gets better and better. Like that last third I thought was really solid. Mm-hmm. And um, as a writer, you have to do that. Like yeah. you, you build it up and then you realize, well, I can do all this crazy stuff. And mm-hmm. maybe that was the intention anyway. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. I think it's really good. 
just a sidebar, those French accents were pretty pretty mediocre. Yeah? Pretty, yeah. As someone who like, doesn't damn. speak French, I disagree. Yeah, I thought it sounded pretty great. I, I don't speak French. Well, somebody so. who does, yeah. yeah. So I thought they were pretty good for Americans speaking French. I was like, were they really trying to convince them that they actually speak French? Oh. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty they flamboyant. Were sh- pretty shitty reporters if they could pick but up again, on that. But again, I mean, they convinced me. <laughs> you know? Like, well, it was real French. I'll give them that. Well, they, exactly. Like, it wasn't just some And that's all you French have words, to do. That's but, all you have to do. You know. You get the words and you're good. And you yeah. say them fluently and yeah. you're good. Uh, fluent, that's the stretch. Again, <laughs> seemed a fluent to me. They did not come across as fluent. She was I'll just say that. Playing the, playing the piano and doing French. I was like, yeah. She I laughed at hers a little bit more than, yeah, hers was pretty funny, the kids. I guess. See, I can believe that because it's like a kid speaking French. Oh, fair. Oh, yeah. 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 But... Yeah. It's still pretty funny. Oh, okay. But she lived in like France for a little bit, so she. No, should... she said it was her first language. Exactly. So yeah. really, she, the, the kid. kid. The kid. She it's said her, first, her language. first language was French. Yeah, I thought she... she was lying. I think she's. No. I'm pretty. Sure, wasn't she bullshit? Yeah, I like, well, I'm pretty sure she's yeah, just trying to impress. Yeah, dude, I think they were both okay. bullshit. I think that's, that, that was that that. the whole thing. It's an an affectation. Yeah. Well, which is why I was just pointing it out, but I said it was funny. Well, that's you. That's pretty cool. Then that's that's actually pretty. But they weren't even trying. Like it's like oh we're. Fooling no, the, them with yeah, their no, French yeah. accent, the we're point trying to come is, across as yeah. snobby, this upper class, right? And this is what they expect, and and it's like, dude, you at least try with your. Yeah, don't no. try the French unless <laughs> you can at least pull off like the fluency. Like, yes, it, yes, anybody. the French is terrible, but I think that was the point. But they and they also don't speak it, so they think it's great. Like, I mean, I they do. probably think it's great. I do. I'm sure. So it's part of the charade. Right. Charade. <laughs> yeah. charade. Yeah, with uh, yeah, with Cary Grant. Charade. Yeah, Audrey Hepburn. Yeah. Uh, hey, it's Jack. We Jack haven't had, had much to say yet. Let's oh, yeah. hear your thoughts. Okay, yeah. And so, last but not least, uh, so yeah, I, I I had known about this movie for a while because mm-hmm. uh, I had seen the all those AFI lists, and so I was always very aware of this movie, but I I just hadn't gone around to see it. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. Um, it did take me a little bit to kind of figure out what this movie was about. Yeah. Like I, I, I'm I was sort of with all you guys with like I'm don't know how i feel about this movie at first Mm. um i'm still trying to dissect a lot of it (laughs) um because the one thing i did kind of figure out is um uh the the plot and the romance part of it was the least interesting part for me Mm -hmm. because i think it was the filmmaker's least interesting part of it as well um because to me this movie sinks or um floats with the dialogue oh absolutely comedy um which once Jimmy Stewart showed up, mm-hmm. then things started to click. Because yeah. at first I, I wasn't sure about Cary Grant, and I've seen Cary Grant before, and I I know how good he can be. Mm-hmm. And at first I was like, he's not doing it for me at first. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Catherine Hepburn, I thought I was like, I couldn't take a gr- get a grasp on who she was as a character. Everyone else I kind of understand, but her I couldn't really understand. But once Jimmy Stewart showed up, and he just kind of stole the movie for me. Mm-hmm. Um, he is was by far the most um uh the best part of the movie like mm-hmm. my opinion like mm-hmm. without him this movie to me falls apart oh um, wow okay. i think i think yeah he's, I'm, I'm with jack on this one i think he's the funniest i think his delivery is great i think yeah. i'm not surprised that he won the oscar out of all the actors yeah, who were nominated totally. the fact that he mm-hmm. won i'm like yeah. yeah no he was most memorable every line he delivered every mannerism he did was just so on point and just well executed and just memorable and mm-hmm. hilarious um when he's drunk like that yeah. shit was gold That's, he was yeah. on point with that uh, i thought yeah like, like that... he was walking where he stopped singing and then kind of looks and goes oh no and then just keeps yeah, singing just keeps going. <laughs> like, 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 everything was just so well done with yeah, him. yeah. He, he like every time he was on screen i was instantly like this yeah. is going to be good shit yeah. Yeah. um whenever he was not especially more in the beginning when he wasn't on screen in the beginning i was kind of like i want him to come back yeah yeah mm-hmm. but as we progressed, um, I thought Cary Grant started to get his, his come into his own, and he had some really good stuff. I love the stuff near the end where he's just sort of like sitting in the background, just kind of commenting on what he's yeah. seeing and being told to shut up each time. <laughs> I'm like, this is good. good. Um, and then his little like shit at the end with the candlesticks. So I'm like, <laughs> where was this? This is great. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, with Catherine Epper, as she started to like being a little bit more snooty, a little snotty, and her little like <laughs> mm-hmm. all those little things, I'm like, that's great. Um, and mm-hmm. the physical comedy of it was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm with Andrew on I I did not like the ending at all. Yeah, I I did not like 
I was like, I thought it was a bit of a cop out with oh, him. Okay. Going, and to me, that's more of the Hollywood times of making a Hollywood romantic. The super ending. happy ending. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I feel like that's just a part of the time, and that's why I'm like, okay, of course they're gonna go with this ending. That's what what they did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it didn't bother me as much, but I will acknowledge I thought that was a weak ending. Okay. Yeah. Particularly like the last sixty seconds. Basically, once Cary Grant decided to spoiler alert, um, and they're gonna get back together, I was like, oh really? Um, I would have liked it if she was just on her own and told all the men to screw off or something like that. I felt like they almost had a good connection. Uh, I thought it was leading towards that they at least come to terms of being separate and they can. That's what I that. thought too. Mm. Yeah, and I thought that's what the building after. So when it switched, I was like, "Oh, okay." I didn't and expect it. Yeah. I didn't expect that, and I I didn't care for it. However, mm. that solidified um, I think the whole point where I, the story in this movie and plot um, is just not important. It really isn't. It was really yeah. just to watch these unique characters interact with each other. And that's really the draw of this movie yeah. is to watch yeah. these funny, unique, smart, witty people um, just interact with each other. And each one has a different scene with a character. And mm-hmm. you just see how each one reacts off each other. And for the most part, it works as their banner. Like, it's really a movie really not about anything. Mm-hmm. There's not much happening. Yeah, there's it's, a wedding that's happening. Yeah. And, just, yeah. and it's just yeah, yeah. seeing how... You know, you put them in a certain circumstance, but it, it, even as the movie lays out, nothing actually happens. It's yeah. all just misunderstandings and seeing things and hearing things and people not being honest with each other. That's all it is. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Th- that's why, like, I agree with you what you're saying, Andrew, with the plot and all that and how, like, in the character arcs and all that. But I don't think the movie was really caring about that either. Yeah. So that's why I'm not as bothered because I think what they were really aiming for, again, was the comedic banter of it. And I yeah, but I, I don't care what work. they're aiming for. I care about what I think. And I, and, I, and I get mm. that. And I, I get that. And I'm just saying yeah. for me, it didn't bother me as much. Because the attention. Because I, I can see their intention. Right. Yeah. Um, but I do think, it. yeah, I'm with you on your what you were saying. I agree with you. Um, it just didn't bug me as much, uh, subjectively. Um, but I can see what you mean. Yeah. Um, so I totally understand that. Um, but... Besides that, um, besides the com- comedic battle and all that, I can sort of see why this has sort of fallen mm. behind with certain other movies. Be- because besides Jimmy Stewart and some funny scenes, there's nothing really that hooked me as like, that's why it's one of the greatest movies of all time. That's why it's mm. 100% is like, eh. Yeah, right? Mm. Like It is definitely a product of the time. And it's cool to see. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I do think like seeing where we were and how far we've come is interesting with all like, you know, some things we don't find flattering anymore like sure you, like one th- word that they use i'm like wow you can never use it that context remember when they said queer yeah um, well i mean yeah. but that's but that was yeah. like yeah just, just just little things like that yeah. kind of add on to it and it's to me it's more interesting it's fascinating to see wow that was that's just how it was back then but and, the but that use of queer though wasn't like the way no no it, it, no no it's it's, it's like, no but, 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 but the fact that they can use it and they're using it in a different context it, 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 like so you, that's that's not like as bad as no 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 it's not as bad but no no yeah. i'm not saying it's bad i'm just saying that it's interesting just mm. seeing that it's, it's, it's time, part yeah. of it and just to me it's more fascinating okay. and how you can and why am i a little bit more accepting of it because i'm just i'm not saying i accept it because it was right but just because i know this was part of the time and it's fascinating seeing that oh this is what was the standard yeah and just putting your mind around like all right well Mm -hmm. now i've seen where we've come from Mm -hmm. and why we shouldn't go back to this because it just doesn't work right right but it i don't fault the film for making those choices because that's what they thought was right that's what they thought how everything worked out and it's just it's just arrogance at the end that's fine but for a movie to withstand the test of time because that's Mm -hmm. why time is a is a great test Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm things change and for it to hold up the other elements need to be so much better and so good Mm -hmm. in order to distract where you go oh well that was yeah that was weird or that was you know the sexist or misogynistic or whatever but it was minor in comparison to these other things but i didn't find the other elements like yeah the writing's great but i didn't find these other elements to to be so good that it's worth uh that it distracts from that complete it's not like like if you're watching uh you're watching an older film and you'll pick out like uh, let's say like it's a wonderful life or something right Mm. i don't know if there's anything in there that um that aged poorly because i can't i uh, can't it's fantastic there's only but but there's so much that i remember about it because of it does uh its story is just so good yeah it's its heart is is uh, it stands the test of time it will always stand the Mm -hmm. test of time and if there's anything like I, i i i wouldn't be able to to point it out just because i i don't remember it because it was 
I was distracted by the other good things. In this one, I wasn't distracted by anything, so I had time to focus mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. on these small things. Because oh, yeah. I'm like, well, I'm not having a like a blast right now. <laughs> so, wow, did he just pinch your ass? Okay, did he? Just, okay, you know, I just you just start to notice those small things. Oh yeah, no, and they definitely were nose noticeable and cringeworthy at, at times particularly with the uncle willie character yeah. like that sure. character would not fly at he all he said that today. mike character like well, he, he was, was just chatting, relentless he was mm. he was uh, uh delivering his dialogue i was then i was distracted mm-hmm. because i was like oh you're funny oh what you're saying is funny oh your yeah. your your movements your facial expressions are and he doesn't fun. take an advantage of a drunk girl which he is also, which was yeah. great. also was yeah. probably the best like male character he was yeah, yeah. In the movie, because yeah, he doesn't do anything shitty, really. Mm-hmm. Not really. No, honestly, he doesn't like besides kissing yeah. a proposed woman. That's the worst thing yeah. he did. Yeah, but that's still he bad, did. isn't it? Because he knows. That oh, it's still yeah, still it's, bad. it's still bad. But in but people do want to rate in movies scale, are, yeah. is, is okay. <laughs> yeah. But it's also not like. It, it's inappropriate in a social context, but it's not inappropriate in like a human rights kind of context. Because you like, didn't kill her or what? You know, <laughs> well, rape? you know, like, oh, like women have a right not to be harassed, like that kind of yeah. thing, right? So, yeah, it's there's a difference. It was consensual. There was no problem with what he did other than the the mar- like marital obligations and that it's more kind of taboo stuff. It's, yeah more taboo mm. taboo is fine i you could watch movies nowadays that have taboo elements to, where characters are doing taboo things and it's for a reason yeah. but like having these like blatant like just the of the time kind of things those are distracting mm-hmm. which is why i thought that like i thought his character yeah man like just yeah no jimmy super stewart distracting mm-hmm. from all that other stuff because yeah. every time he was on screen it was like yeah i'm just interested in you mm-hmm. like what you were saying i agree with all that stuff I mean, I think Cary Grant is really good in this, no, too. What's I don't think the, there's enough props going around about him. No, no. I think he's kind of... He's the thing good. about his is I, I think he kind of silently creeps up because I think that... <laughs> yeah. He does. No, he, in the, no yeah. I, I said that in the beginning of the, in the movie. I, I did not know what to think of him. Yeah. He wasn't is, really it, hitting... He kind of seems to be the one who just like shows up and starts commentating on things. Yeah, he's yeah. like the silent <laughs> smartass. Like, yeah. yeah. And I he's, really he's liked him for just, that. He's the troll. Kind of, but he's like, but he's like, he does it, he does it though, like, not like outwardly, he just kind of like, he sits back. That's what a troll does. They just sit in the background and just say some, like, they just try to stir the pot. Yeah, or make like an. Kind mm-hmm. of an just, antagonistic just, comment. Yeah, poke the bear and watch yeah. the Yeah, outcome. they're like, oh, you know, he's just being, he's a troll. Yeah. <laughs> he was yeah. a troll. And I like that, actually. The more yeah. trollish he got, the better it was. So yeah. I agree. Yeah, he does creep. No, 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 that's what yeah. I said. As the movie went along, he, he yeah. started to win me over and he got better Yeah, I feel like the more the more uh, people and uh, he was given to interact with and the more things yeah. to do, he got he got funnier. Yeah, no, like like I said, like uh, uh, Jimmy Stewart, like I said, he was just, he hit, he had a grand slam from his first swing Agreed. going out and he was great. Yeah. yeah. Whereas, um, um, you know, I thought, you know, Cary Grant hit a bun at first and then slowly he started to get better and he hit for the cycle at the end. Mm. So it was good mm. yeah. um, for all you baseball fans out there who knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> so he did sports. Mm. Sports. It's fun. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that should be our intro. Yeah. <laughs> sports. sports is fun. fun. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, and that's but why we sit on our asses and watch movies. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm retired. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but overall, yeah, no, I thought the movie was it was good. Um, I yeah, just based off. Uh, Do you want to go to Philadelphia after this? Does this movie make you want to go to Philadelphia? Yeah, big time. Yeah. That <laughs> setting, boy, oh boy, did yeah, I could I good. tell it had that Philadelphia <laughs> charm. Yeah. Um, I don't know, like uh, whether I think it's underrated or not appreciated enough. Um, I think more so. It's not appreciated enough from what you were saying, Zach, in terms of with um, in the context of uh, uh, romantic comedies today, Mm -hmm. just not really hitting it in terms of the laughs or the memorability or anything like that. And the black and white. Yeah, just just anything like that. There's no real like it just seems very cutie cutter and just, you know, not everyone's really putting their all into it. And I feel like this movie does show like, yeah, no, if you you can take a, a very plain basic idea and do something with it, about with it that's funny mm-hmm. and actually witty and memorable and not just fluff. You know, mm. this is a very simple movie and there's very little fluff in terms of like padding or big plot twists. It's all just on character moments and dialogue. Mm-hmm. Very much kind of like a Tarantino movie in a sense where there's not much happening plot wise. Mm-hmm. It's just all how these characters are interacting with each other. You know, mm-hmm. and that's the appeal of it. Um, mm-hmm. For the most part, this is like, kind of like something I like Reservoir Dogs or something like that. It's yeah. all in one location. 
you know not much is happening plot wise people are just more like talking i think that's the best part of this movie but yeah and i like those i like those movies a lot too i mean i typically gravitate to, to them actually if they're really well done it's i really like days of confused is one of my favorite movies yeah. too. that's another one that's just a blast and it's just nothing happens um there's also uh, La Dolce Vita is also another really mm. good one by Fellini, mm-hmm. who it's just, I mean, it's just, it's, you know, it's some talking, you know, it's some hanging out. Yeah, like the, before, the before trilogy is a good example yeah. of just uh, completely relying on dialogue and that chemistry. Yep. And it mm-hmm. is also a romantic film, so that's another good comparison. Yeah. And that it's a little more serious, but it is like it ha- it is comedic, it is romantic. Yeah, you're just, you are really so, still just hanging out with them. Yeah, yeah. and I just yeah. I I love those characters. They pull yep. them they pull them right off. So yeah, I think mm-hmm. yeah you like that kind of stuff. I really that. do. Yeah, and and it's just really cool when they can pull it off. And then Reservoir Dogs, honestly, even though they got guns and fun stuff too. But it's, it's still yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's, it's 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 a yeah. it's a simple premise of just you know getting interesting characters in a room and, and just have them. Eight. Yeah, no, exactly. So, well, it's yeah. the advantage of an ensemble cast. Like, obviously, this there's there's a few defined roles that are that are the main roles in this movie. But th- even all the bit parts, like all the family members, the mom, the dad, the 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 creepy uncle, maybe not so much, but the the little sister was <laughs> yeah, I was gonna oh, say yeah. that was, was pretty really funny. Good. Yeah, yeah the the child actress is was really I, I good. Liked her yeah. over um, uh, sorry the uh, Catherine Hepburn. Yeah, Catherine Hepburn. I I preferred her character. She was uh, really good, actually. A little bit more yeah. just because she was just... But the reason I'll say that is because I thought she was consistently good. Every time she showed up on screen, it was fun, mm. and I liked it. And I was like... And again, it was just a really good child actor. It was one of those things where... Yeah, and especially during a time when there wasn't a whole lot of... Yeah, you know, Shirley Temple was the mm-hmm. peak, and that was... you know, mm-hmm. So for to have a, a good a kid actor like that and yeah. be a funny, memorable well, especially character... Especially to have a character that's kind of written as smug and obnoxious, yeah. but doesn't actually come across as annoying. Mm-hmm. No, she comes off like a bit endearing, and you kind of mm-hmm. like yeah, her. Yeah. And for her to stand mm-hmm. out with all these heavyweights is mm-hmm. you know, commending to her, her character and also just her performance as well. She, yeah. she held her own the fact that we remember very well yeah i mean i mean the only weird thing i mean obviously going back to the misogyny stuff is like the fact that she just really wanted you know like oh she wanted to see some so violence she yeah she was a little some, like, oh, a little too excited about yeah uh, you Woo! know what that one that one i could actually get past a little bit easier yeah. just because um there there are sisters right so there's that sibling there's that sibling rivalry kind of thing yeah. where you mm-hmm. want you know where siblings kind of have that where you that want love some, hate mentality you want someone to punch your yeah. sibling on your behalf or you want to punch <laughs> your sibling or if you're too young yeah you want somebody <laughs> to do it or whatever you're like you know she just needs to to get her own or whatever like i i could see from a sibling standpoint mm-hmm. i mean th- it's but, a little uh, like, different though the, i mean the fact that like their marriage pretty yeah. much ended after it was just like oh shit like it was it was really bad. No, like, it's that, bad. It was, I still like, think that's a whole different ballgame. No, that's like if your I'm sister ex- got attacked. I also or think that the, and it's like yeah, let's do that again. I like, also think that I, little I, bad I, I, I might be reading. Shit. I, I might be reading a little. I don't know. I feel like she's misinterpreting the punch as the face smush. Mm. Um, I think that's what like did you really soccer and all that stuff. I think she's just it's more like just he didn't actually punch her. Mm-hmm. I I didn't ever got that across that he actually did it. Um, I think that she's just finding like their little spat. Like, okay, I'm I'm not like thinking mm, that like oh mm. this is yeah like no I obviously don't don't think this is okay and it bothered me yeah mm-hmm. uh, and that was part of my criticism but I, the reason why I kind of look past with her the sister's comments a little bit is because she's I guess because she's a kid yeah, yeah, and yeah kids yeah. will say very inappropriate things uh, but just because they're not emotionally mature enough to to. You know, to think the way that we think about what happened, right? Mm-hmm. So when kids say things that are inappropriate or are, are just a little too blatantly honest or something like that, like we're, and I, I can kind of excuse it because kids really do say things like that. So I can believe that. Kids will say the most inappropriate shit because they have no filter yet. Well, yeah, a lot yeah, of I times mean, they'll, they'll do it for attention too. Like, yeah. if, you know, it's, you know, so the. 
the kid will be like, oh, yeah, did he really suck her? And she'll yeah. be like, Dinah, that's so that's inappropriate. So and yeah. she's like, hee hee, I got a rise out of somebody. Exactly. Like, and that's that's the point I was trying to make, like hmm. sibling rivalry kind of thing, where she just wants to get like a, a rise out of somebody or get her sister hmm. mad or her mom mad or whatever. Like, that's what I mean. Wasn't not she like that, that she wants her sister to get the shit beat out of her. No, yeah, no. that's yeah. not what I mean. But that's <laughs> what, what we're meant. talking yeah. about but here. But didn't the, I mean, the sister like want smallpox just to stop her? Yeah, the, uh, like she's saying outrageous yeah. shit. Well, right? yeah, I mean, in that that's all fine but i mean that was like something that happened so that's a little bad seed kind of thing a little yeah. bit a little bit of uh like children of the damned you know like you a little so? bit of sinister with uh, the red but, right hand yeah oh, oh yeah it's a little you <laughs> know, know something's that brewing. got, that maybe got real just, maybe it's just my my view on that's on you know, kids came like, 10 like years on later. kids and their mentality but like they can be pretty shitty and mean. Yep. Oh yeah, no. Oh like yeah. I so could, like, I, 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 I had can, two younger sisters. So it doesn't it doesn't bother the <laughs> shit out of me because it's like, well, yeah, I could see that, and she could get better. Because again, mm. kids, it's like they have to learn from these things anyway. So it's it's not one of those things where I go, she's a shitty person now and always, or and I'm mad because I hate characters like this. No, it's a kid. No, I mean it's a kid just possessed kid. possessed by Satan. <laughs> and you know that's okay so that piano uh, so like if you play the, her piano bit backwards you can hear her, like calling <laughs> saying six 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 right exactly that. yeah well, well i mean you we thought it was french oh, but it wasn't french it was, it was uh, <laughs> it's the devil's she's, the speaking, devil's she's voice. speaking in tongues yeah, that's what she's yeah. doing yeah i mean you know which makes andrew a, uh i guess a christian because that's the other way it's like the right way <laughs> and then you put it backwards so, yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm not sure when this got to be a spiritual Zach's writing discussion. writing gets an F from me. I didn't Luke's write writing gets an A. Off the dome, but his boy. His comedic writing gets an F. Off the dome, brah. Off the dome. Yeah, you had to write that down. I like, didn't write shit brain, down. In your brain, you had to figure that joke out. No, man. Off the, so, off the dome. Good job. Off good the job. dome, Those home. neurons had to fire. Yeah. That joke <laughs> came they, exactly. they were written down <laughs> mentally. <laughs> no, no, not mentally. He pulled that right out of his ass. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you mean it never went through the brain? It just came no, like, straight it, out it of went, his mouth? No, it just straight out of his ass. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it was just like, it wasn't even a thought. It just came out of his mouth. He made sounds. Yeah. Off the dome, home. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> where are we at, Rylan? <laughs> are we at about wrap up time? I yeah, think. Sh- we should do final, final, final roll call, thoughts. final yeah. thoughts. I mean, I'm glad to hear everybody's variety of opinion on the subject. I mean, it seems we can yep. all agree that uh, Jimmy Stewart and uh, screenwriter were both deserving of their yeah. Academy Award wins, and. It's and it seems like we can also all kind of agree that maybe this movie doesn't get talked about as much because it does show its age, a bit. But I'm glad that everybody was able to get something out of it, at any rate. So any final thoughts or comments or anything else from anyone? Let's flip it around. Oh, Why not? Let's go, Jack. No, all right, all right. no, no, yeah. no. Took me. Took me for, uh, for 40 minutes for my opinion to come across, so I'm going to make wrong. this wrong. Is wrong? This 43. Is wrong. 43. You spying on my time? Yeah. You son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, creeper. Anyways. You, uh, Uncle uh, Willie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I should have written down a line or yeah. two. I would have spouted that off. Oh, <laughs> Yeah. Um, also, I, uh, one thing I, I read about the, the the director of this movie, he was the original director for the, like the first three weeks of Gone with the Wind. Really? Yeah. Huh. And then he got fired. And he's um, Gone with the Wind. And then <laughs> his next, I think, like his. his <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. 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 For for those of you one. who for those of you who are new to the table, uh, Andrew's concession of a pun is a very very big deal. <laughs> I don't like Zach's puns. No, you don't like puns. Let's face it. I don't it. like you don't Zach's like puns. Is what I've figured out. I, I do people like, like puns, my puns. You I don't. I just don't like Zach's puns. <laughs> or when Zach tries to. You like that puns. one though. Even more momentous than. It's, it is even better, though, when everybody else laughs, except for Andrew, when he's straight-faced, and everybody else laughs, and I turn and I look at him, it just fucking kills him. <laughs> it's, it, it's almost worth it. Like, it's great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, overall, yeah, I think this is a good, uh, it's a good movie. Um, I'm, I don't think it's underrated, in my opinion. I think it's just, it's a solid, you know, old-time movie. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, Jimmy Stewart, the appeal to see it to me is Jimmy Stewart and the comedy, the banner, and just, you know, some good good moments. It's fun to watch, but um, I I don't have any motivation to go out and see it again. But I'm glad I saw it. I'm glad I got it out of the way. And, uh, you know, it's 
It's it's good. I enjoyed it. Mm. I think that audiences should see it. Anyone who's listening, absolutely go see it. Just like all the other films that we've talked about. As it was said in the 1990 version of Total Recall, open your mind. Because a lot of people, I think, who are listening to this, they're in teens, 20s, 30s. Sure, yeah. So they're, they probably haven't seen something this old aside from It's a Wonderful Life. Yeah, something or, really famous. Yeah, yeah the, like The Wizard of Oz. Ones, Gone with the Wind, whatever, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Gone Dante's with the Dante's Peak. I haven't even Dante's seen Gone with the Wind. 1997. <laughs> yeah, that's going back. <laughs> Woo! Which one? Dante's Peak. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Volcanoes all day. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> or Volcano with Tommy Lee Jones. Oh, man, that's a great one. I mean, maybe the only black and white movie they've they've seen is The Artist. <laughs> or Schindler's List or Ed or Wood I was going to mention Ed that Wood. too anyone who's listening to this should have seen Ed Wood yeah. by now what are you doing you should have yeah. seen it by now we reviewed that ages ago yeah, yeah. come on guys like last year and no stuff. no I think I think the younger generation <laughs> if you're gonna a little send bit me... more credit but yeah they probably didn't see anything that wasn't like uh, very very notable though because I mean it does take a lot like even for me I've, I've missed out on a lot hmm. um, because it, it takes a lot to go that far far back into to older catalog yeah. an older an older catalog of movies just because it's kind of it's time consuming <laughs> it is t- yeah 112 minutes it is time consuming and like jack said there's not a whole lot that happens like no one dies no one gets cut up there are no explosions there's some drunk driving oh there is and For there's about yeah. five seconds and there's yeah, some transition like, i still my favorite like impaired driving okay impaired <laughs> driving scene is still from uh um from uh, Wolf, of Wolf of Wall Street. Thank you. Uh-huh. Yes. That is oh, the way that kills me every oh time. Oh my god! Really, like that movie. Like I have my opinions on that movie as a whole. I remember losing. I was shit. Oh. If I cannot watch that scene every time, oh, I was that crying, is the best laughing driving for scene that on film. The Quaaludes, yeah. The Quaaludes, yeah. yeah. I lose it every time. It is so funny. It is actually great. Well, because yeah. the build up is so good. Because nothing so is happening, good. and they're like what's going on like you know we took these quaaludes nothing's happening they like they work out they like do all the stuff and then it just like <laughs> like <laughs> it's like a hammer and they just they acted out so well the yeah. two of them oh anyway yeah. <laughs> junk driving so and and some skin there's some skin you see Catherine hepburn's legs and back in the day that mm-hmm. was probably considered taboo People were probably jerking it right there in the theater. There you go. Like, right in the theater. Yeah. Like, right in the theater. Right, in the right theater. on their tickets. All I can remember is when... <laughs> rated R, 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 R. It's R. It's R. The, R. The, Pirates. It's, this, was, this, this movie came out during the period of the Hayes Code, who, you know rated the films and yeah. censored yeah, it and all that yeah. so they and it was like run by like a catholic uh industry yeah the like rating that. board yeah it yeah, so kind of like, still is are you you're yeah. talking like uh oh the swimsuit scenes or yeah pretty much or like him like carrying her and her legs are exposed like, yeah yeah that like too below the knee are exposed that's like, still if still. you're amish that gets you off i think I don't speak from experience. I'm just saying. Well, I mean, you don't have to be Amish. Amish. Yeah. Wait, what? Amish is the wrong choice on that no, one. No, no, no. Uh, Didn't you ever see Weird Al's um, oh, yeah. Amish Paradise? Paradise? Yeah. yeah. So there's a shot in there of two kids with a magazine that shows a woman lifting her yeah, legs. Yeah. 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 You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so see it for Jimmy Stewart. See it for the writing. See it for Catherine Hepburn. And I think Cary Grant's character... I th- he's. I think there's a reason why he's uh, reserved for most of the movie until Absolutely. he he finally comes out of his shell in the past ten or fifteen minutes, yeah. and it's great to see. I think his character, whose name is Dexter, mm-hmm. he's he's a mind fucker because <laughs> I I think he takes his ex wife his his her weaknesses and he turns her on herself. You got to watch the movie to understand mm-hmm. what I'm talking about. Yeah, but like I think he inception. plays it hmm. or. The Dark Knight, because that's where I'm or, getting that line actually, from. Was, oh, yeah. oh, the line, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because oh, he's taking yeah. her weaknesses, and he, he's poking and probing, and yeah. he, he sees an opportunity, and he sees it going his way, and I think that's why he so comes out of the show. you see him less as a troll and more as a master manipulator. Oh, he can absolutely. be both. He can be both. Yeah. He can enjoy the I moment. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's yeah. pretty smart. I mean, the fact yeah. that he, yeah, he basically comes in with this idea, and he kind of like... You know, moves it How all about some blackmail? And, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was good. That was again just the dialogue like that is yeah. so good. Like, yeah. 
But know? but he takes her back because she exposes her vulnerable self, and he's like, "That's great. You weren't like that before. Now I can live with you. Yes, let's get married." I don't yeah. think it was just a thing where, "Oh, we need a Hollywood ending." Maybe it was, and I think a lot of films nowadays borrow elements from this film. Yeah, and like the happy ending for it's more you know. of the execution, I would say, of how it was done. Like you can you can take any idea, like the whole happy ending thing. You can execute in a way that where it works. In this way, movie, I didn't think it. I, I, like to me, it came across as a cop out with how the movie's built up. Because movie is 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 very slowed pace. Uh-huh. For the, in terms of its um in terms of its pacing, like you really do sit sometimes for a while and watch these characters just talk, and then the ending is just like little bow wrapped up, gone. Throw yeah. the throw the mail out in the, well, in the car. Put it in the Jack's it's mailbox. It's still a guy yeah. who's like shitty exactly. enough that she left him. Uh, or uh, that they got a divorce and, you know, was a abuser manipulating her into thinking that she's lucky to be with him. Tell us more about how you want rich people to suffer and we should see it. Yeah. <laughs> you were talking about that earlier. Yeah. 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 yeah just charade. Yeah. It's all a charade. It's all a charade. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there is one thing that I, that one other thing that I did forget to, to mention. It was, um, I think it was the, it was, Oh my God! Is I'm losing it again. I'm losing it. Whatever. You know what? Forget it. Forget it. Not important. Um, but you, there. I've Tell us, given, Andrew. I've already given plenty of examples, but uh, Tell us, Andrew. Yeah, I, I personally agree with uh, Jack on 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 oh. most of the points here. Like, yeah, I, I don't really think it's underrated because it has so it's it got its recognition then, and it, in my opinion, has shown its age. So I, I feel like. No, it's about where it's at because it's aged enough to where it's lost. It doesn't deserve the same accolades, in my opinion, as it got back then. Um, well, if, you know, it, again, see it for the performances, especially from, uh, you know, the male leads um, because they were really good. Uh, but again, it was just it, it was just one of those things where I, I feel like it didn't age particularly well. So I, I, I think it's good, just not great. It was just to sum up. Fucking misogyny. See it for its male performances. Yeah, SJ I was Dubs the coming same for you. <laughs> they coming for you. Oh yeah, those, those female <laughs> actors. You know what? You know what? Screw them. You, you know what? Go Dude. see it for the kid. Go see it for the kid. She's great. Yeah, Willie. Go see it for the kid. Yeah. You know uh, what? That one scene oh, in the carriage, right. actually, yeah, their, like their dialogue weird, right? was a bit weird. Yeah. Um, she's like, I got something to it. It's a bit intimate. I'm just like, yeah, intimate. Or she mm. says it like that. I was yeah. like, the very poor choice of words. A little, a little weird. <laughs> yeah. yeah, a little strange. But I mean, yeah. to her, it's just an uncle, man. It's just like, it's my, just... my crazy uncle. Yeah. You know, and I, I don't think he's a pedophile, so i'm good who knows being a perv was kind of his only character trait so i'm not really sure (laughs) it's not developed enough i guess for him where he's like how far will he go (laughs) (laughs) let's (laughs) not find out indeed but uh philadelphia eagles philadelphia cream cheese the philadelphia story where's my ticket where's my ticket to philadelphia (laughs) where when are we going when are we going? When are you going to see? Going to fly to Philadelphia, see some flyers. We're going to go. We go. Yeah, the, the flyers. We're flyers, gonna. We're gonna Eagles, buy food yeah. off of the flyers. We're gonna. You do whatever you want. You want to go to a Phillies game? Sure. Okay. We're going to Philadelphia. Is Philadelphia that, story that... part two. Exactly. Do you know who the Phillies are? The Phillies? Isn't that the baseball team? There you go. Yeah, yeah I don't want to go. Uh, yeah. I'm just I, I shouldn't. I'm like, yeah, we'll go then. Bye. As soon as you get off the bus. Um, yeah, no, I, I mean, I've kind of said everything really, but I don't know. I'm, I'm more in line with Alex and I guess Rylan. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I do really like this movie. Um, it worked for me. Worked me real hard. I also got to do, I also got to do a shout out to Jack the Horse because that was great. I mean, anytime you name Jack a horse, I know what you're getting at. Oh. Okay, and it's funny. I think it's great. It's a good joke. You know, I don't know if they intended on that. Sure. But, man, that was good. Uh, I thought that was pretty why, good. Why did, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, but uh, yeah, all the performances are solid. It, it really is just a lot of them hanging out. There, there is a little bit of a message there for sure. Um, you know, especially in the last like third, as you were saying, Alex, um, 
but yeah, overall, it is just a lot of people hanging out at this, you know, wedding that's coming up. And it's, yeah, you don't know what to make of it at first because, like, things are being set, but you're kind of like, okay, what are all these characters doing and what, why? And you don't know what's going on. And then just things kind of start clicking and clicking and clicking. Um, for me, pretty soon into the movie, um, but uh, like probably 20 minutes in or something. But uh, yeah, I thought it was fun. It was funny. It was, you know, it was sexy. It, Jack the horse, <laughs> Ryland. All right. And on that note, <laughs> uh, yeah, essentially, uh, seems like everyone, for the most part, everyone's in the same boat that you should go see this movie. It has some great writing. It has some great performances and great character interactions. And it is definitely worth a watch. No matter what you think about it, you can drop us a comment on any of our social medias and hit that follow or like button there while you're at it smash it (laughs) yeah Yeah, go go right ahead hit it with your best shot (coughs) and uh with that we are rylan jack alex andrew and zach and we are bidding you adieu until the next episode